In Dale Jaguar, Kendall Cumbria invited us to test drive the iPace. We wanted to experience the difference between driving an electric vehicle and fossil fuel cars and to try all the EV driver settings because we had questions to answer regarding the electric regeneration braking system and when brake warning lights of the iPace would come on. We thought there would be a relationship between regenerating braking and the brake lights. The answer is simple but we had to try every combination of regeneration settings to find it. We explain everything in this video of our road tests to show you how we came to our conclusion. You are looking at iPace electric vehicle setting screen and you have several choices. Creep on or off. On is useful if you want to manoeuvre the iPace like a traditional automatic where having your foot on the brake control speeds under 5 mile an hour. You have the choice of high and low regenerating braking. In the low setting, the iPace drives like a traditional car. In the high regenerating setting, it's one foot braking where you rarely need to press the brake and if you have the creep setting off, the iPace will come to a standstill without you needing to press the brake. First of all, we're going to test the low regenerating braking setting. This is a military firing range in Cumbria and this is the Jag and what's going to happen is when it goes past me the driver's taken the foot off the accelerator from 16 is going to slow to a speed of 30 and when the speeds drop to 30 mile an hour we're going to do an emergency stop and that's to show the difference between the deceleration that you're getting when you're in low regeneration. We wanted to know if the brake light of the iPace would come on in the low regeneration mode when going down a very steep mountain pass. Nice. So I need to go into drive. I'm off. I'm just waiting for the camera car to catch me up. He's behind you. And I'm in um, a setting which will mimic a normal car. It's a low setting for regeneration, brake regeneration. But if you notice on the dashboard, just above the speedometer, I have a needle, and that needle is showing me that I am using power. When I say needle, I'm talking about the power gauge dial. And I could be going at the same speed shortly, going downhill, and I could be regenerating power. So, it's now at the point where I'm going to be easing off the accelerator. I haven't lost any speed, but I'm regenerating. Oops, I've actually lost speed there, but that needle is showing that I'm still regenerating power at this point. And I'm wondering whether my brake lights are on. We'll pick that up on the car behind. No, they didn't. No, I would expect the brake lights to be off because I'm going back on the power and I'm using a considerable amount of power li lifting the car up this hill and you can see that on the needle and here I'm keeping the same amount of power on doing the same speed Easing back slightly. I haven't really lost any speed. I wonder if my brake lights came on at that point. Wrong again. Oh, yeah. 
it lights. Just Definitely I can not. still slightly on the accelerator, I'm totally off the accelerator, and I'm regenerating a lot of power, but I'm not actually touching the brake. But I know that the brake lights are probably on at that point. Here I'm just a little bit Well the camera can confirm they're not, Ian, it the definitely did off. not come on. Beautiful views of the Lake District to my right. totally off the accelerator. I haven't actually touched the brake yet, but I can tell that I'm regenerating a lot of power because of that uh, needle. Now, there's a car park along here somewhere, so I'm going to pull into that car park. feel a kind of braking, engine braking, but obviously it's not the engine, it's the electric motor that's braking. These tests show that in the low regenerating energy setting, no matter how much energy was being produced by the braking effect of the electric motors, no brake warning light will come on unless the brake pedal was pressed. It was actually like being in a petrol engine car in a very low gear. In fact, when we were pressing the accelerator to drive down a hill, the energy gauge showed the I-PACE was regenerating power. This was initially contrary to our fossil fuel driving instinct, but we soon adapted and liked it. Now we're going to experience the high regeneration setting with creep. I'm going to get to 40 and now I'm taking my foot right off the accelerator and it reduces speed far more quickly. It's come to a stop very quickly. Well, not to a stop, I'm sorry, it's still creeping. It's got to 5 miles an hour and it's staying constantly at 5 miles an hour at this point. That's because we've got the setting on creep. If we had the setting not to creep, we would have come to a complete standstill. And here the Jaguar comes and it's picking up speed. So it's now at a speed of 60 mile an hour. And the brake lights came on when the foot came off and somewhere along there, there's going to be an emergency stop from 30. And the distance that the car took to stop is vastly reduced. And that shows the difference between one mode of driving and the other that in high regen the brake lights will come on because the car is slowing dramatically. When the I-PACE is set to low brake regenerating, the I-PACE responds exactly the same as a petrol or diesel car. When you release the accelerator, the I-PACE gently slows. Brake lights only come on when you use the brakes. But in high regenerating setting, you can drive with just one pedal. You only need to use the brakes occasionally. It will slow to a standstill unless you have also selected the creep setting. Decisions, decisions, but which setting is the best? In a town or city environment where you are changing speed all the time, the high regenerating setting extends the eye pace range. This is a fascinating diagram. It's the battery. All of the underneath of the car is battery. The diagram also shows the two electric motors that accelerate and decelerate the vehicle along with the brake discs. We are demonstrating that as you ease off the accelerator, the two electric motors create energy and in doing such, slow the car down. If you need to slow more than the maximum amount of deceleration from that method and you apply the brake, 
initially there's an extra amount of electricity being developed. Press harder on the brake and you then start to connect the mechanical brake which creates heat onto the brake discs. This heat is wasted energy. So try to avoid braking hard. For our final test, the Jaguar I-Pace, the leading car, is in the high regenerating setting, no creep. We want to know how this setting affects brake light warnings it gives to other road users on steep mountain passes. This is our final journey in the I-Pace. I'm driving along Gummer's How and Ian's following in our car with the camera on. We just want to confirm when the brake lights come on. We know they come on when I take my foot off the accelerator once I've lost sufficient speed. There's something called a decelerometer on these cars and when the car knows I've lost enough speed by taking my foot off the accelerator the brake lights will come on automatically. I do not need to press the brake pedal. Now there are a couple of instances along this road on this journey where we can show this to be the case. I'm just about to come across two oncoming vehicles and I know I squeezed the brake. So we know at this point the brake lights are on because I squeezed the brake. The next example you're going to see where the brake light comes on, I am actually climbing a hill, I'm powering the accelerator, but I ease off the accelerator because of a bend that I am assessing. In a normal fossil fuel car, there is no way that I would have applied the brake. I would have lost far too much speed. But in the electric car, in this I-Pace, I know I took my foot off the accelerator to assess the bend while going uphill and the brake light came on, which we can see because the camera filmed it. And that was the final moment for us. We knew then how this car was operating. It's the decelerometer that is controlling when the brake lights come on. And of course the brake lights need to come on to show vehicles behind that you are losing speed. Good drivers read the road and brake lights play an important role. Driving up steep hills in a manual car, we have all experienced the sinking feeling of slowing, for whatever reason, to the point that the engine power dies and end up having to scrabble for a lower gear as the speed of the car plummets. Seeing brake lights come on in such a situation as this makes me somewhat anxious about having to change gear quickly but do I need to stop and then do I have to do a hill start? Now when we drive up a steep hill we'll look out for exhaust pipes on the leading vehicles and if they have none they could be powered by electricity and we can read the situation better because of our newfound knowledge. Unfortunately our test drive came to an end. But for more information on this electric car use the YouTube end annotation links top left iPace mobile apps top right iPace fax bottom right test drive iPace with us as we carry out an in-depth review and bottom left we give you an assessment of the electric costs and information on the practicalities of going electric.